Okay, so the first repair that we're going to do is to replace the pulley wheel and um, I've lost a few hours, I had to go back to the shop and pick up a new pulley wheel but I've got it now and I've also got a new pin that goes with it so we'll take this wheel off and put this new one on Now to do that you can see it's got a square head on the pin there now the square head actually just sits flush against this um, mounting bracket here and then there's a little metal tab that folds over to hold that in place and it just sits proud on the opposite side here as you can see so I'll go in there now I'll pry out that tab on the rear I've just done that with a screwdriver and then I'll go in with a pair of pliers and just grab that tab and gently and neatly fold that back so that it's got a nice square edge to um, to fold back on. Now we can almost just pop that straight out and there we go. Now you can see here this is the old pulley and you can see that hairline crack that sits on this bearing here so it would only have been a matter of time before that failed and needed replacement if I was a tight ass, I could have just got the soldering iron out and gone right over that and melted it all back together put a bit of epoxy around there to reinforce it and it probably would have bought me a few years but it was just as easy to spend another ten dollars and get myself a brand new wheel uh, so I've done that I mean, 13 years is pretty good for one of those. The other one's still looking pretty good. So um, we'll get the new wheel and the new pin. We'll pop that back in, back here. Pop the wheel in, if it'll go in. Yep. And just pull it straight through. We'll get our pliers and just bend that tab back down. Should have got a larger pair of pliers. No, that'll do. And we just fold that tab back down. Make sure we get a nice tight connection there. We don't want that tab to be folded back too loose because we want that pin to be held tightly in place. Just crimping, crimping that connection down a bit tighter so that our pin does not move and that's, that's excellent. We've got a free sliding wheel there. Nice rolling action. This one here doesn't turn very well but what I've decided I'm going to do is to use a bit of this I found this down at the uh, Trash and Treasure, at the local Trash and Treasure on a Sunday. Uh, picked it up for 50 cents, some non galling lubrication oil. So I'm going to put a couple of drops on that pin there, and um, hopefully that will resolve that issue. And because it's non galling, I'm hoping that. Um, We don't get anything stuck to it, any dust doesn't stick to it over time and um, cause it to fail. But only time will tell. You never know if you don't try, and that's worked a treat. Just one drop of that seems to have done the trick. There we go. Rolling like a bought one. That's the new one. That's the old one. Doesn't even make a sound. I might even use the excess on my finger here and just wipe that onto this pin just to help this one along a bit. And there we go. 
So I'll call that complete. Um, those are ready to go. Let's move on to the next repair. Now the next repair that we need to do is just to fix this circuit board here to the main panel because when I replaced this diode a few years ago it was actually this circuit board here is actually sitting loose and it's only connected via these little wires here on this end of the board to the main board and the only way it was fixed out of the factory was with a bit of hot glue in two spots on the back side there and one little spot where you can still see some hot glue just over here but I've noticed that there's some holes along the top of this board that line up with some screw mounting um, holes down there so I'll just go into my little bag of tricks here and see if I can find a couple of screws that'll just fit nicely in that hole and um, we'll screw that panel down and then it'll be better than a bought one I've got a couple here so I'll just line that board up I hope that fits nice and tightly in that plastic I'm, I'm not going to bother tapping these grooves here I'm just hoping I get a thread that fits nice and snugly in there and then we can uh... oh yeah that feels nice and tight that is perfect I think I think is it even going in yep there we go that is not going anywhere perfect so I've got another one here I'll just pop that over on this side that way we've got a nice tight board it's fitted well and um, we don't have to worry about hot glue and things like that I really don't like using hot glue I don't know why it obviously lasted long enough for this application but if I've got screws I'm going to use them there's another one with a slightly different thread but we'll give that a go see if that fits in there what you definitely don't want is these screws not being tight enough and falling out but no, I can sort of feel that that one might be a little bit too loose, but we'll keep going. No, that's actually screwing in. There we go. That's done. That's not coming out. This one's still a little bit loose. There we go. So that is nice and snug that feels nice and snug and the one on the back is also tight so that's pretty good okay so that panel is pretty much right to go I'll just tuck these wires back in without catching them anywhere or pinching them and that is just about done as a repair, we'll just let that sit there for the time being until we put the top panel on and then um, we can screw it all in to the top panel and that should be good to go. Now the next step is to remount the motor back in the correct position so that will go, go across here, it will get fitted onto these two little receiving lugs here and then we've got a couple of clips which will hold the actual motor into place got a bit of dust on one of them so I'll wipe that down quickly but we'll put the motor in first and we'll just maneuver that into position and it will just sit right there like that in between the two pulleys on this side and that's not going anywhere if I rotate this all working well so we'll get our little brackets here get the dust off of this one here and that should be right to just clip straight onto this bearing housing here on the bottom side and then the other one clips over the top 
and that's going to be a bit tight so get the old trusty screwdriver line that up and just hopefully still haven't got it let's try again the screwdriver method doesn't seem to be putting enough downward force on there for these clips to engage in the bracket and I don't want to risk slipping with a screwdriver and cutting a hole in my finger or just as bad popping a hole in some of the windings so um, I decided to grab the right tool for the job which I believe is a pair of these plumbing pipe wrench tool here and if we yeah no nearly and we got one on it seems to have worked pretty well now we'll go for the second one there we go clipped on even got a spark there too but that is nice and tight spinning freely ready for the next step which is the drum okay now I was about to install the drum bearing kit when I realized that on the side here there's a bunch of pop rivets and one of them down and below here has actually popped off so it needs to be replaced so what I will do is grab my drill we'll drill out that hole There we go, there's the old piece of pot rivet there, I'll grab a new one and I'll whack a new one in that hole, that way everything's all secure. Nice and flat. go. Nice and tight. All the other ones seem to be okay. Good as new. Okay so I've got the new drum bearing kit here. I've got the main bearing mounted on this plate assembly here and I've got the two new spacers. We've got a small one and a larger one. We'll get to those in a second. We're going to reuse the old bolt and the old screws. Um, but this time, instead of just tightening this up with this ribbed washer, um, forming a tight seal, I'm going to also be using a bit of the old Parker TL55. It's an anaerobic uh, compound, medium torque. So that'll help to lock that nut into position to save it coming undone and potentially ruining the bearings again. Uh, because when I took this apart, the nut was actually just sitting loose on the end of this bolt here so the whole thing had just wound its way undone all of the bolt bearings came out and it turned into a bit of a disaster so we'll begin by fixing this plate to the inside of the, uh, the actual drum itself got the trusty impact driver There's a quick shot of the drum bearing mounted inside the drum. The next step is to mount this retaining ring around the um, outside of the felt strip here. So I've got two black marks that line up with two black marks that we've put on the inside on the plastic here. That way we can make sure that we get our screw alignment correct, just in case they're not evenly spaced. And I'll just begin by whacking a few of these screws in and we'll get this sucker mounted off.
Now that looks pretty tight, so we can move on to fitting off the drum now. So I'll drop it in through the top and we'll gently get it in that sleeve there because we don't want to smash the metal from the drum onto the felt sleeve. Feel your way in there. Once you've got it all the way in and you know it's right, you should be able to let it go gently and hopefully it'll just support its own weight. Okay, so I've got the new belt here and I have taken the time to inspect it and make sure that there's no cracks in here. There's no need to replace a broken belt with another broken belt. So now that we know that that's all good, we'll put this belt around the drum here. Just hang it in there and pop the belt over the other side like so. And just roughly line it up in position. You can see where the wear marks on the old belt were, so just roughly line that up. We'll give it a quick rotation test later. It's only a rough alignment. Before we attach the belt to the rotor on the motor and run it through the pulleys, we need to attach the drum to the heating element and that involves putting on the new drum bearing kit. So what we're going to do is grab the little plate that goes inside the drum, this guy right here, and we'll grab our bolt and we'll put the bolt through the plate like so. The next step is to mount this little spacer on the inside. So you want that little ridge facing up and the hollow section facing down so that it covers that nut uh, that nut on that bolt there and sort of encapsulates it and then that little ridge forms the bearing surface on the actual bearing on the side of the bearing itself now because we're going to have to pop this whole assembly through from the inside of that hole there um, what I'm going to do is just mount a temporary piece of duct tape over the top like that. When we pop it in, we can just stick it down, and then when we're playing around with the uh, heating element, we won't knock knock this whole assembly back out every time we misalign it. So let's go and put this in, and we'll get that heating element mounted on. And we can see the bolt sticking out the side here and if we touch that that's not going to pop back out because we're held in by the tape. Okay now that we've got this bolt mounted we've got to put the second spacer which is the larger one on the bolt and again we want the little ridge facing the actual bearing itself, the side, of, the side face of the bearing and the larger end, the larger surface, the larger OD sticking out towards the heating element which we're going to put on right now. So I've cleaned this all up, cleaned up this surface here. We've um, wiped it down with a damp rag and it's all ready to install. So now we've got to line up that hole with that bolt. I think I've got it here. Sort of. Yep, there we go. That's in. Now we line that up with the back panel and come in with our screws. And that's the drum mount. Now that this is securely mounted, we can go ahead and install the nut which will tension the whole drum bearing kit and tension it to the heating element bulkhead panel thing there. Um, but this time I think I might use a bit of Parker 
TL55, which is an anaerobic thread seal, thread locker. And this is a medium torque, so we won't have to apply heat to it or anything to get it to um, undo, but we will have to apply, apply a bit of force to get this off. Just means that we're going to have to give it a little bit of time to cure. before we put any major loads on it, but we can test it today. So we'll tension that up. So now we're under the drum and it's time to connect the belt to the rotor and it needs to come around the drum inside this jockey wheel here, around the rotor, inside this jockey wheel and around the rotor again and um, the tension in the belt will actually pull these two apart putting tension on the whole belt drive pulley system uh, so what we've got to do is somehow get it all in these pulleys here and pull it tight so that it sits in the little grooves on the rotor. Then you want to roll it slowly because you don't want any misalignment to cause it to tear over to the next groove or anything like that so just take it easy and as you go around once or twice the belt will actually self align on the drum too. So you don't want to give it a good whirl on your first go. Let it find its centre And that looks pretty good. Now I'm just fitting off the little vent tube that goes through to the back panel. Nice and snug there. Now before we assemble the top panel and the rear panel, I've just got to add a little cable tie here to fix the wiring loom. Because I removed it earlier to remove the heating element. I'll just pop that in there. Nice and tight. Now to assemble the top panel, all you've got to do is make sure that this fold here is located in this slot in the back panel drop it down, line up the screws and pop them all in Now the next step is to install the back panel and we've just got to make sure that this port here is aligned with this tube first and foremostly. And once we've got that into place, clear the power cord, hold that in place at the base there make sure that we've secured that port and then pop a couple of screws in. So at this stage we've got the top panel and the rear panel mounted with the exception of three screws which go along the top here because we needed to leave them off until we install this plastic surround top cap or whatever you want to call it pop that down and then these three screws go 
through the top cap and through the panels and it secures them all together on the rear. Now we'll need three more screws to fix the front of this surround. Put one in here, another one over here, and one more in this top corner here. And that's done. Now we can install this control panel. you've installed that and sort of clipped in underneath the plastic top cap here, we can go in underneath and there should be two screws to lock it into place and that is the reassembly complete. Job's done. I've got the dryer back in position and I've got a full load in there. Close the door. Power's on. And off she goes. Now that definitely sounds a lot better than what it did before. Well, I think we can give this the Energy Fabricator 5 year guarantee. Please check out my Google Plus page. Don't forget to subscribe and leave some comments. Thanks for watching. I just remembered that. Uh... <laughs> zoom, damn it, zoom. Freaking hell. Drill it out. Ah, put it on the wrong way. Dickhead. Dickhead. Maybe I'll put that video for you. And that'll be right, my cable tie doesn't fit through this freaking hole. Now yeah. before <laughs> Hey? That's gonna be smart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, okay then. You probably get started. <laughs> what am I gonna call it? The top panel. We're nearly ready here for the top panel. Thanks for coming.